the 1976 North American Taekwondo Championship, featuring athletes from the Jong Park School of Taekwondo from Toronto and their opponents from Chong Lee School in Montreal. Hello everyone, I'm Bill Lincoln, and today on Wide World of Sports, an in-depth look at one of the most exacting of the martial arts, Taekwondo, the Korean art of self-defense. And with me is Larry Green, a student of Taekwondo, and my colleague this afternoon. Larry, the obvious question is, what is Taekwondo? Well, Bill, Taekwondo is a combination of two martial arts, the Japanese style of karate and the ancient Korean art of Taekwondo, which is foot fighting. You put those two together, and literally in Korean, Taekwondo means the art of punching and kicking. It's all here on CTV's Wide World of Sports. Before we get to the team competition, Larry Green, let's uh, have a look at Park Jong Su in a demonstration of self-defense techniques. Now, Park Jong is what degree black belt? Currently, he's a seventh degree black belt, Bill, and uh, he ranks as one of the world's finest uh, demonstrators and teachers and uh, and fighters in this particular category of martial arts. He uh, he was the national champion of Korea. He's taught in the Netherlands and Germany. He's demonstrated Taekwondo all over the world. And this particular technique that we're going to see is called a flying high-rising kick, uh, which demonstrates the kind of agility and speed and power that this particular gentleman has. Uh, I had the good fortune of being with him in Korea in 1970, and he performed this feat in front of uh, many uh, of the Taekwondo experts, if you will. And uh, even then, they were in great awe of this particular technique because he does this so well. Well, as you can see, we've got a terrific crowd here this evening, and uh, certainly I don't think they're going to be, they're not going to be disappointed one bit, I'll tell you that. Now, you're going to explain just exactly what's happening now as Park jong Su comes into the ring. All right. Uh, this is the way that the technique generally works when Mr. Park does the demonstration. The gentleman you see on the screen now, Harry Gomez, uh, who is, by the way, wearing some uh, equipment, if you will, for some knife fighting demonstrations, which we'll also see is lifting Dwight Hennings, another black belt from the Park jong Su school, onto his shoulders. Uh, they both, in turn, will get on top of this chair, and Dwight is holding two one-inch boards, and he'll extend his arms, and the height of the boards will come to about 10 feet. This is normally the way it's, it's being put together. Now you see, uh, yeah, they're all lifting him up, and he's going to be holding that wood out in front of his body. Now, it's about 10 feet and better, the height of uh, those one-inch boards. And Mr. Park will start usually at the other corner of the rink. He'll approach the boards, jump into the air, and he'll do pretty well the splits. One knee will almost touch his forehead, and he'll break those boards with the bottom of his feet. Uh, it's an incredible task. I know it's a little difficult to, to understand, but when you see it, um, it's really fantastic. He's got to set those boards up very straight, though, because if they're tilted back and they're not flush or parallel to the ground, you won't get the power the full impact of, uh, of the technique. You know, I think when people do get interested in some of the martial arts like this, this is the stuff they'd like to do. But you don't do that right off the top, do you? No, this is a technique uh, that you can practice right from day one, almost, uh, in, in your learning of the 
art of taekwondo, but it takes many, many years uh, for somebody to do this. Now, Mr. Park has to concentrate very carefully here um, because it does take a great deal of skill and, and power. Now, he's just getting set now, and here he goes. And up. Fantastic. Listen, does he have to follow right through that kick? He doesn't pull back, does he? He's got to go right through those boards. He's got to go up in the air. I think we're going to see this in slow motion, if we can. Uh, well, there it is. We're going to be able to see it. Now, you'll watch the split that he gets, because that's one of the techniques that's involved in this particular one motion kind of event. Up he goes, and there's the split. Look at that. Look at the oh. leg stretch. Does he go beyond a point? Does he concentrate on a point beyond those boards now and try to hit that point with a follow-through force? He has to. Uh, that's the only way he's going to be able to get the power to, to go all the way through. All right, this is the knife demonstration. Here could be an assailant ready to attack. And that's the way you do it, eh? That's the way you do it. Now, here's the combination of techniques that uh, Mr. Park teaches, as do all teachers or experts or masters of Taekwondo or any martial art, how to put into practice as a self-defense the kind of techniques that you normally wouldn't use uh, at, that, at this level in the school itself. You see, there's a combination of foot and hand technique. This immobilizes the attacker, right? Oh, you bet your life, Bill. What sort of a feeling do you get? A, a very sore one. <laughs> I guess so, eh? I think we can see this one again. If we could, here's the combination of, of uh, Harry Gomez, who was originally from South America, attacking Mr. Park with an overhand. Mr. Park counters with a, uh, what they call a roundhouse punch to the stomach and then a hand technique to knock the opponent down. All right, what's happening? There's another Walking overhand the back. technique. He was stopped. Now he's getting him right below the arm. Right in the ribs. In the vital rib cage area, right? That's right. sore. Let's watch it on slow motion now. Even though... Uh, See that, Bill? Even though this is a demonstration and Harry Gomez is pretty well protected, Mr. Park John Su has such tremendous power. He's lifting. There, it goes again. He lifted him right up off the ground with that kick. That hurts. I don't care what kind of padding you're wearing. That's going to smart. Larry, what happens now? Is this all sort of a reflex motion? Once you've been into the, the routines, you, you practice these moves all the time. It's a reflex thing, isn't it? It's a reflex thing. It's a technique, uh, kind of a concept. You have to know the combinations. You've got to be able to react very quickly. No different than any other athlete, say, on a football field, a swimmer. When something occurs, you've got to react to it. And you've got to have all kinds of techniques and many, many hours of practice and training, breathing techniques, concentration, and so on, to do this kind of uh, technique. Here's the slow motion of that last one that we just saw. Here's Harry thrusting, changing hands with the, with the blade. And Mr. Park stops. A double combination, a kick. And Harry Gomez goes down. He's not holding back at all now. No, he's not. He's hitting him pretty hard. Uh, I think he's holding back somewhat because, like I say, uh, even with the kind of padding that you've got, he can do a lot of damage. Where do you aim now for the front part? Now, do you aim for the solar plexus area? That's that's the key in, in terms of the stomach and chest area. All right, let's uh, watch it here now in slow-mo. Fine. He's going to hit him again right in the solar plexus area, right, right below the rib cage. There it comes. Bang, there's one, bang, there's two, a roundhouse, and a double hand technique. And if you'll notice, you know the old karate chop kind of thing, you don't really hit with the sides of the hand, it's more the bone uh, on the on the wrist that really knocks him down. There's a flying kick that's... There's a oh, flying see kick. see this one again, we have to see this one. T flying kicks are very unique to Taekwondo. A lot of the other martial arts don't believe in, in leaving the ground. Um, he looked a little shaken up on that particular one, but watch this flying technique, because in Taekwondo, they go up in the air, Hey, you lose your gravity. You have to have a lot of control when you get up there. And he went up, well, Harry's about six feet tall. That's a pretty good chunk. Is there a special technique then in getting that high, first of all, and retaining all that leverage to kick out? Well, I think it might be interesting to note, there's a beautiful kick. Maybe, here it is. Here's a great one. It's called a 360 degree reverse kick. There he goes, up in the air and down with the heel. Fantastic. Now this is to catch your opponent off guard, right? Gonna catch your opponent off guard for sure. They're not used to seeing people going up in the air and, and using flying techniques of any kind. And now he's going to go for him again with a knife. He's with the attacker. Knife. That hurts. There's a lot of power in that straight side kick that Mr. Park jong Su just executed. Snap from the waist. That's the technique. Might be interesting to note that uh, one of the famous exponents of Taekwondo was a guy by the name of Jun Ree. He's a master in Washington, D.C. And uh, he was Muhammad Ali's instructor in uh, in his karate or taekwondo training and uh, just before 
that uh, famous boat with the Japanese wrestler, he was learning what was known as a reverse punch. What he, what he really, in fact, learned was a straight taekwondo punch from the waist. And, uh, you know, that's kind of an interesting uh, little side like you, this. You brought up an interesting question. Now, we're talking about boxers against the taekwondo expert. Uh, is, is that a mismatch? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think taekwondo will hold its own with a good boxer because they use the combination of hands and feet to such a great degree that they're as proficient with the bottom limbs as they are with the upper. I think uh, the boxers may have a, a better technique for a consistent punching kind of action, but uh, overall, I'd say it's pretty fair match. Larry, how long does it take to get proficient at taekwondo? Many years, I think, Bill. I think it's a fallacy to think that you're going to study any martial arts, uh, just like to be a football player or a baseball player takes a lot of years. This is Yang Bo Kong, uh, who is doing a pattern or kyong in Korean. It's a combination of hand and foot techniques. In really, in reality, rather, he's, he's really um, executing a battle with many different opponents. If you can imagine every strike, every blow, every block, there's somebody there doing something, attacking him. It's a very hard thing to do, to, to do this by yourself. Is this a ritual before each match? No. This is a, a whole technique unto it, itself. You don't warm up, though, with these exercises. No, you could. You've got to warm up uh, totally different um, to be able to get the muscles and the ligaments and everything else constantly moving. The blood's got to flow before you can attempt that technique. If you listen carefully, the snap on his go buck or gi or his, or his uh, jacket is really powerful. We'll be back with more on CTV's Wide World of Sports. Well, we're just getting ready now for the first bout in the 1976 North American Taekwondo Championships featuring athletes from the John Park School of Taekwondo in Toronto and the Chong Lee School of Montreal. Larry, there's a different scoring system here, the point scoring system, isn't it? In the team competitions, Bill, what we're going to see basically uh, are five two-minute rounds that will be judged in each corner by a corner judge plus the referee in the ring. The uh, bouts are two minutes in duration. Now, each fight will total up points. And the, the team that wins will, win, will be the team that wins the rounds as opposed to the points. In other words, uh, for each fight, we'll see so many points scored, and the team or the fighter from whatever school who gets the most number of points for that round wins the round. Therefore, it's like three out of four, two out of three rounds out of the five fights, right? And that will be the, uh, the team winner, if you will. I mean, how do they score it now? Uh, by hits, uh, technique that they use? Full contact can't be used in a point system of uh, martial arts, Bill. What we're going to see here is uh, a good shot at uh, good, important points to the body uh, by each member uh, using his hands and feet. Here's the captain of uh, Chong Lee's uh, team. His name is Ray Nikiel. And Bill, I might make mention of the fact that these guys are all champions in their own right. This is John Picard. Uh, he's in the heavyweight division, by the way. There's Denny Langwa, a great fighter in his own right. Pierre Mercier from the Chong Lee School in Montreal. Fabio Zara, north of the five guys. Holland uh, fought in the European team here in Toronto in other tournaments. From Chong Park's school. Alfonso Gabidon, great fighter, great technique. Very exciting Korean young fighter who's now living in Toronto, Doey Lee. And Dwight Hennings is the other member of the team who uh, obviously hasn't made it to the ring as yet, Bill. Uh, I think he was involved in something on the floor. I think I see him walking around somewhere. Anyway, Dwight Hennings, Case Coogan, Alfonso Gabidon, Doey Lee, and Richard Paris will go against Nabil Zara, Pierre Mercier, Jean Picard, Denny Langlois, and Ray Nikiel for this team competition. Does height and size play any big important role in Taekwondo? It's not a, a huge role, but it will have some bearing on the overall fight because you may have equal speed and strength, but that little bit of extra reach just may make the difference. There's something really nice to see. These guys are friends. They fought before. Uh, they've been against each other and on the same teams in international competition. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of good sportsmanship there, as you saw. And this is great. Here's Nabil Zara, who's in the gray dobuk or gi or uniform. And uh, going against him, from Toronto will be Dwight Hennings. They'll turn away from the center of the ring to adjust their uniforms. This is proper etiquette. Uh, they bow to each other. 
and off they go. The referee is Mr. Kong from Pittsburgh, who has a, a school there, and uh, he's very well recognized in uh, martial arts circles. Now, here we go. There we go. There's no bell in the air. Pardon me? They don't start with a bell or anything like that. No, they're just off. The referee makes the decision on when they go. Ah, there's a good attempt. No points. You'll see the flags being raised. Uh, Dwight Henning's tagged with a red uh, ribbon in the back. And if he scores a point, you'll see the judges raising the flags to determine whether or not they feel that it's a, a, a good point. Now, what we're seeing here is it goes down. It's a mandatory stop of this particular match by the referee. It's his decision. He controls it. They're sizing each other up. It takes a lot out of you to be moving up and down. Uh, there's a lot of concentration involved there. I was just going to say, they move around there. It's almost like a couple of chickens, you know, uh, doing a little bit of a dance. Well, boxers dance, uh, taekwondo fighters dance. There. There's a forearm punch. There's a point score. There's a point score. That's one. Good shot of the crowd. It's pretty bu busy here tonight, Bill. Uh, it's getting a little warm in here, a little smoky, too, up in the stands. It's unfortunate that people do smoke in tournaments. They should maybe put a lawn. It makes it difficult for the fighters. What you're hearing is key up. It's a, a concentration of yelling from the lower part of the abdomen. There's a nice try for a reverse roundhouse. There's another one. Um, helps get the opponent off guard and it gives you a little more emphasis and strength in your in your approach. Well, they, they use this in karate and judo, too, don't they? Yes. It's called a ki in judo. In judo, it's called a ki up. In, uh, in Taekwondo. Well, what's happened there? The referee decided that uh, one of the corner judges showed a flag and he wanted to determine whether or not it was a true point. It was not. So far, it's only one to nothing for Dwight. See that? They're wearing kicks, too, by the way. Uh, those are foam um, padding that goes over the feet, and they're allowed to wear this. It, if they do make contact, it kind of softens the blow a little bit. They're not required to, but uh, a lot of them do nowadays. Too high, too high. Boy, they lash out. They really lash out. I could feel the breeze on that one. A lot of power going in there. They've really got to strike hard. There's one. Oh, full contact. But he stopped just in time. And that's a good point, I believe. No. Over in the corner there, uh, we're seeing one of Mr. Park jong sus students, a guy by the name of Peter Gretz, who's uh, one of North American, uh, one of North America and Canada's uh, expert taekwondo fighters. That's, that's, that's a draw. We saw a point for Nabil Zara and for Dwayne Henning. So uh, nobody wins that round. That's kind of a, a toss-up. So conceivably, then a team, uh, two teams, can end up tied after the five bouts. It can Three, determine. Two, two. This all can be determined by one bout, Bill, and uh, it's going to be kind of exciting to find out whether it goes all the way. Uh, we're seeing Pierre Mercier from Chong Lee in Montreal, and uh, coming into the picture now and into the ring is Case Coogan. He originally came from uh, Holland and was a black belt in Taekwondo in Holland, one of the uh, European fighters on tournament, uh, tournaments that have come to North America before. As a matter of fact, he has fought in uh, North American tournaments against uh, Park jong Su students in the past. He's decided to move to Canada. He's been teaching now and uh, participating in this very exciting 1976 World Championship for Mr. Park jong Su. How about Taekwondo in Canada, North America generally now? Is there a great deal of interest being events right now? Oh, They're it's fantastic. Higher? Fantastic. Uh, of course, things like uh, Bruce Lee movies don't hurt. Uh, They'll specialize in things like Kung Fu and, uh, and Karate. There's a, a pull down, but that doesn't count. It was uh, more of a, a grab than anything. You can't get uh, points for that. What are they wearing on the fist? What are they wearing? What, what sort of covering, fist covering is that? They're wearing light padding uh, made out of foam and a uh, little bit like boxing gloves. They're very light, maybe three, four ounces. And they, they kind of tie on the hand. There's some good points being attempted, but nothing really uh, happening there. A little bit of etiquette. Very important in any of the martial arts, whether it be from Japan or Korea or China, whatever. Very important. There's a good attempt at a, at a side kick. No points there. It wasn't in high enough and uh, not enough technique to really give you anything. So if you block it, then... Uh... You block it, no points. There, a lot more foot technique being used by Case. He's on the ropes, the referee will call it, and he does. It's very important that uh, the fight stays in the center of the ring. There's a nice technique, and the white flag goes up, and there's a point for Pierre Mercier. There's another judge. This corner judge saw no point, two in the referee, so there's a point for Montreal. So the idea, then, is to put four judges around, and somebody's got to clear Somebody's got to see it, and then the referee will make the final decision. And there's a red point for, for Case. Uh, nice roundhouse kick to the, to the face or the temple, and he pulled it just in time. So we're at a draw now. Again, one point apiece. What happens now, Larry? Do you watch a certain point of the body to, to find out where the weight's shifting in order to parry or, or block the thrust of some sort? 
It becomes automatic, Bill, when you're in the ring uh, after fighting so many guys in class and over the years, you get a, especially at the black belt level, uh, you get to, to react as soon as you see an opening. And of course, there's fakes and a little bit of parrying, if you will, going on. But uh, there's one. Hand and foot techniques. One of the, no points for that. No points for that. One of the uh, most important things is the use, the usage, rather, of combinations. Hand and foot techniques. Double hand techniques. Good balance. There's a back, a backhand. And will the referee award it? No, he doesn't. So we're still at a draw. No, no point. He's up two points. You don't see a full strike, a full blow going in. That resembled boxing at that particular point. A little bit. I think when you get in close on hand fighting, you don't really get to see as much of the good techniques that Taekwondo offers as you do when they're a little bit further away from each other and they can utilize their lower limbs and their feet. Is the idea then to move in close to your opponent, to tie him up, or to stay clear? Depends if you're short... Uh, and got short arms and short legs. You may want to get in fast so that Case doesn't have an opportunity to do what he's doing now, which is giving Pierre a little bit of difficulty, keeping him at bay by using the foot techniques. Because there's a difference of over a foot in height, eh? In these particular two fighters, yes, there is. I think we're coming up to about two minutes, and uh, it's still at a draw, so we're, we're looking... Uh, there we go. And there it is. Good sportsmanship, though. They pulled their punches after the end of the round, and uh, Mr. Kong is determining... What is uh, what are the scoring points right now? And uh, he will determine whether or not uh, there's a winner. No, there's a draw. So that's two draws. So we're down to a best two of three situation right now. So far. All right, here's a slow motion replay of some of that technique. So I guess there's balance. some fake center of balance. Feet. Here's a bit big thing. That's right. Here's Case protecting himself with his foot. A backhand attempt by Pierre. You can see him coming over the defense and striking to the uh, just under the nose is where he's, he's aiming for. It. That's a very good technique by him because he's short. He faked uh, uh, Case out and then moved in and jumped up a little bit to get that, that extra point. Here's uh, a very good fighter with some interesting te techniques. Uh, Bill, I've seen him fight before. Uh, he's kind of an aggressive, uh, very determined fighter. His name is Jean Picard. And he's going against a, a very flexible and, uh, in his own right, also a, a great, great fighter, Alfonso Gabidon. Now, watch the different styles here. Alfonso likes to use his feet. There, there's a kind of a sweep attack utilized by Jean Picard in the dark uniform. Um, he'll, he'll like to get in and use his hands. He's very, very tough. He's a very aggressive fighter. Now, Alfonso likes to use his feet a lot. Get up in the air. Let's see, what, let's see if they really stay to, uh, true to form here. Is there, there any pattern, kind of punching. Though, is there any pattern for an aggressive fighter now when they move in? Do aggressive fighters win more than the, than the, uh, the more subtle technique developed? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think uh, fighters like Jean Picard are going to win a lot of fights because he moves you out of there. He doesn't want you to stay solid. He doesn't want you to use your feet as much as uh, maybe Alfonso might want to. There's some, some techniques. He's, he's going he's to get in close if he can. There he is. He, he's moving in close so that Alfonso can't get that long leg out. Uh, to get that snap, there's the required roundhouse kick or the or the side kick. There he is trying to side kick. If he can keep doing that, he's going to score some points. But uh, Jean's going to try and stop him from doing that. He's just pushing him away. No points. Look at the balance. One foot moving in on one foot. You can't. You got to have some power. You got to have power and balance. Look at that. Keeps that foot in the air and tries for a hand technique. Trying to keep him off balance. Moving in. Now, is there any percentage for for moving around and and trying to get your opponent off balance? No, I think uh, you've, you've generally just got to determine what's going to happen based on what your opponent's doing at the time. It's not like boxing where they, they stick true to form and go in a particular area to avoid going in the corner. It won't make much difference if you go in the corner in this particular kind of, uh, uh, of a match. And a very aggressive hand, uh, series of hand blows by Jean Picard, but no points were awarded. He didn't score anything cleanly enough. There's one. There's a beautiful backhand technique. I'm just saying, from our vantage point, it looks as if they're really striking each other, but he's they're not. not. He's pulling it. He's, he can touch him. He can touch him. But he can't, he can't follow through. Hey, let's watch and let's see. It was one point that I saw, and there we go. We have a Toronto winner on that boat, Alfonso Gabidon over Jean Picard. He's wearing boxing gloves, by the way. It's unusual. Uh, they look uh, like rawhide. Hey, watch this technique. Watch his technique. Here he comes, here he comes. Sizing him up, and clean, fast. A backhand blow to the ear, not too dissimilar to what Pierre Mercier did in the last boat. Here he goes, Bill. He's pretty happy, too. Uh, he knows that the boat was ending, the time was running out, and he got in there nice and cleanly just before 
the boat ended. So the John Park School of Taekwondo in Toronto leads the Chong Lee School of Montreal one to nothing. Coming up is vote number four, and the John Park School of Taekwondo Toronto leads Chong Lee School of Montreal one to nothing. This one should be a good fight because both these athletes are exceptional when it comes to talent. Fantastic, Bill. Both of them are, are very light and lean and very, very fast. And you'll note that Doey Lee, who will be in the white uniform, uh, really relies very heavily on flying techniques. He's also tagged, by the way, so if he scores a point, there'll be a red flag going up. Denny Langlois from Montreal, a fine, fine champion in his own right and a very, very aggressive fighter who can counter many, many of those foot techniques because he's equally as proficient. Look at that, combination hand and foot. Beautiful technique and a good point, I think. Let's see, the flags are up. Red flags, I think it was a point. And a flying technique and a takedown. Look at how fast he jumps around. Fantastic. That's an interesting contrast in styles because uh, Denny Langlois in the gray is almost in the classic boxer pose. That's right, but he moves very fast in and out. Watch. Uh, how he tries to counter Dewey's very, very proficient foot techniques. Uh, a little bit after the count, but nevertheless, there goes the red flags, and Dewey Lee has scored a point. He wanted to make sure, threw a couple extra in, just in case. And they considered it a punch. A little discouraged, but nevertheless, the bug's still going. There's a beautiful technique, flying. Another foot combination. Dewey Lee leading 2-0 in points. Oh, beautiful, and a takedown. Mr. Kong tells them to get up. There are warnings, too, for, uh, for penalties that are taken, but none were given by Mr. Kong there. Oh, a beautiful technique, but no points. Into the corner. There he goes. Kind and he doesn't matter if you move into the corner at all, eh? No, other than you're a little bit uh, you become in vulnerable. trouble. Yeah, I think you're a little bit in trouble for room to move around. Normally in the school, of course, you wouldn't be in a ring, so you have a little more floor to, to work on. Lots of spring in the feet. Watch Doey. He likes to get up in the air. He likes to go up. You can hear he's a favorite here with the crowd. Well, being in Toronto and uh, being a member of the Park jong Su School of Taekwondo here in Toronto, of course, I think he would get some of the favoritism. But there's a lot of French-Canadian people here tonight, Bill, and uh, Denny Langlois is not going to go unnoticed, that's for sure. There's a front kick attempt. Another one. No luck. Too far away. Oh, uh-oh. Doey's down, and uh, he doesn't look too good, Bill. I think he walked into that punch. Oh, he hung it right on him. Here's, a, here's, here's a, a, an instance where he, he dropped his guard and kind of walked in open and uh, walked right into the punch. Uh-oh, oh, there's... He's oh, he's oh, he's falling right out of the he's ring. Up. Is he all right? I think he's okay. Uh, Dr. Anderson is the uh, physician. That's him in the white suit. He's moving in 
to make sure that Doe is okay. I hope he is. Uh, normally, these things are very well run, Bill, and uh, there's a lot of supervision in all areas, and especially, for instances, just like this. Well, uh, let, let's see what happens right here now in this slow motion replay. He should get a... There's that front kick I was mentioning, and I think he goes for another one before he actually drops his guard and goes in. His hands are down. He's not really protecting himself very well. And Denny, of course, is... Uh, there he goes. Oh, he he's open. Yes. And he walked right in. Denny looked like he tried to avoid hitting him in the face and went for the forehead to try and uh, try and miss hitting him in the mouth. And I think that was very commendable on his part because he didn't have much time to think. And Doe's down. He struck him right above the eye. And that's it. That's quite a shot. They're still working on him. I, I hope he's all right. I think he is. Um, those, those protective punching and uh, kicking techniques with the... Uh, the special padding that's on really helps out a lot. You know, it's not like getting hit with a bare fist, and uh, I sure hope that he makes it through this to continue on. Uh, these guys are pretty spunky, Bill, and they don't give up too easy. Uh, it's like any other good athlete. They train very, very hard to, to continue right through until uh, until the thing's over. He's okay. He's getting up. Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah. That's great. All right, now, uh, will he be allowed to continue? If the referee and the doctor feel that he feels that he's capable, of continuing the fight, he will. And uh, knowing Doey Lee, he'll take it right to the end. He's, he's leading he's in points. Competitor. He's leading in points at this particular point in the in the bout. He appears to have shaken it off. Doesn't seem to be any uh, any physical markings. There's no blood or anything. He looks a little bathed out as well as anything else. But uh, he's smiling. He's a good competitor. He's going to get in there. That's great. Doey Lee, fantastic. You know the thing I really notice most. There's a lot of polite ritual that goes with this. It's courtesy. It's etiquette. It's, it's part of uh, learning the discipline necessary to compete in any of the martial arts. There they go. He's still up in the air, no matter what. He just fell off the, uh, off the ring, and now he's flying up in the air, trying again. And down he goes. Down he goes, and he's being helped up a little bit by Denny, too. He seems to be doing all right, in spite of the fact that he cut that blow high on the forehead. I think we're running close to time, and uh, if this is a guess, we're out of time. And uh, there he is. He's the winner. That's kind of amazing. That gives the John Clark School of Taekwondo of Toronto a 2 nothing lead over the Chong Lee School of Montreal. That had to be one of the better bouts this evening. Here's the slow motion of uh, Joey Lee and, uh, and Denny Langwa. He's trying uh, varying techniques again. Look at the spring. Both of these guys like to get up in the air. They're light, as I mentioned, and they like combinations of foot techniques as well as hand. Denny, as you mentioned, has that boxing stance, and he's very, very quick. He'll get it on you very quickly. Here goes Doey, up in the air, and he's ready. He's going to spring. It's just like a, like a reaction. There he is. Look at that technique. And a nice block. That's called a roundhouse technique, too, and you have to sweep that one around. There's a reverse one over the top of his head. If he was closer, he would have got points for that. Denny is a very good defensive fighter as well as being a good offensive fighter. I think Doey is a little more offense in his in his concept than uh, than his opponent this evening. Well, does that score against you or or for you when you're a good defensive fighter like that? Uh, oh, you, you can you can win as many fights being a good defensive fighter as you can an offensive one. Some good techniques uh, by both fighters. That was an excellent match. All right, bout number five, the John Park School of Taekwondo, leading Chong Lee School of Montreal to the nothing. Will they shut out the Chong Lee School? We'll find out in a moment. This is going to be kind of interesting again, Bill. These guys are old buddies, as you'll see. There you go. Uh, I don't know how serious they're going to take this match, because really it, it's not going to mean much in the overall standings, uh, since the Toronto team looks like they're going to win it. Ray Nickiel is the captain, and uh, Richard Paris in the white uniform. Look at him, look at him, look at that combination. He gets up there, he loves the kick, loves the kick. Ah, uh, good key up. That startled me, you know. <laughs> and I'm not too far away from him. There he goes, there he goes. Oh, and a fast rush. A takedown by Ray Nicchio. If they get a little too cozy, it's going to give the sport a bad name, but they're having a good time out there. It's nice to see that kind of sportsmanship, and they're enjoying themselves. And I think uh, for this evening, it's one of the highlights to see such rough and tough competition ending up with such great uh, good friendliness a lot you know a lot of involvement personally as well as physically look at that look at that balance oh and a beautiful technique a beauty Richard Paris a 360 degree turn and a reverse roundhouse kick I think Mickey L thought he had that block oh he sure did but it was worth a point <laughs> I think the crowd's enjoying it too Bill. 
Mickey Yell and Paris are enjoying it. They sure are. You are two excellent fighters. These guys have competed in international competition before. Um, they're good at it. They know what to look for. They know how to score points. They know how to work the timing in a round. There's a flag, but the referee decided that's not enough. Not enough distance between uh, Paris and Nicky L to get that point. Well, it's 1-1 at the present time. A backhand oh. fist. Good one, good one. Yes. A good point for Ray Nicky L. Another backhand fist. That's three of those scoring points uh, this evening, Bill, in three different matches. So that technique has worked very, very efficiently and very well for three different fighters. A uh, little too close, little too close. Great combination. There's a series of blocks by Paris. Oh, good front kick, but he blocked it. Well, apparently they stuck a flag oh. up for Wagon. Are they going to avoid the point? Yeah, it looks like it. So Nicky L then is leading three to one. I think this is the first time that uh, one of the Montreal fighters in uh, tonight's matches have really been leading. Too close, too close. Again, trying that back fist. to work for him once before. Oh, good blocking, good blocking. There. Another point scored. So Ray Nickiel has really uh, taken the lead, and it looks like he's going to hold it. It's four to one. And it's that's it for the match, too, Bill. That's it. They're all done. And the winner is Ray Nickiel. Four points to one. That's the first. Win by the Chongli School of Montreal, Ray Nikiel. He's pretty happy about it. Let's watch it in slow-mo now. Watch some of this technique. There's some defensive moves by Paris, just trying to keep him off guard. Ricky L's not being fooled by any of that, Bill. He's got his arm up, but he's not moving. He's not giving him anything. Look at he's using his leg there. And a beautiful, beautiful reverse kick to score Paris that point. That's one of the finest points all night. A beautiful technique by Richard Paris. We'll be back with more on CTV's Wide World of Sports. that's uh, taekwondo that's what it's all about i'll tell you it's got to be one of the more exciting sports that i've seen in a long long time taekwondo being what it is bill as we saw that combination of punching and kicking and those flying kicking techniques really make it a unique martial art uh that's what gives you the excitement that taekwondo is so unusually uh interesting uh, you know that's what it's all about and uh the kind of stuff that we saw tonight the kind of sportsmanship and that really tough attitude towards uh, team fighting is really what uh, gave us the kind of interesting and entertaining evening that we had tonight. How about North America as a hotbed of Taekwondo? Well, it's a developing sport in North America. Of course, it came from the Orient originally, but uh, there are thousands, literally thousands and thousands of students every day developing the kind of techniques that Taekwondo will offer to the world, and uh, we've done our right in international competition. The John Park School of Taekwondo of Toronto, edging out the Changli School of Montreal 2-1, two, two bouts ended in draws. This has been the 1976 North American Taekwondo Championships from Toronto. I'm Bill Linkle with Larry Green, and that's it for today on CTV's Wide World of Sports.